Today we're going to talk about chemistry and a little bit of geology with gemstones. This is corundium and this is garnet. Corundium is also known as ruby. This is a small little piece of garnet to demonstrate. This is uh, a little piece of garnet that you can see is somewhat transparent. Now, the neat thing about garnet and ruby, well, they're both red in this particular case, ready purple, but um, they, they look very beautiful. These are not gem quality ones by any means. So let, let me show you here. This is natural ruby. You can see there's quite a few inclusions and it makes it so it's not gemmy looking or very transparent. But you can see the actual structure that the crystals grew in. And they do that uh, with the natural cleavage as they form and cool from their liquid slurry as the crystals grow almost like a living thing. It's kind of amazing. In the right environment, the crystals grow beautifully. Now, as you can see, there's a number of different colors. That's a very dark one, right? And the garnets, an easy way to tell the difference between a garnet and a ruby, not only is the hardness, but rubies, or corundium, fluoresce. Let's see if I can control the brightness just a smidge in here. Okay, so this is the nat natural fluorescence of the ruby, which is pretty neat. Now, since we know the composition of rubies itself, it is possible, should you have the ability to do great heat, great pressure, and the right chemicals to possibly make your own. Now, this in itself is ruby. That is aluminum oxide mixed with a small amount of chromium oxide. And that is a chemical composition of corundium. Now, you might have noticed these. These are carbon electrodes. I attached them to a modified transformer of a stick welder and used a melting crucible or a melting bowl and made this. Chemically, it is exactly the same as ruby. It's kind of, uh, it's still kind of beautiful. You can see some carbon uh, impregnation. Sorry for the shake. Anyways, but that's a beautiful, beautiful color. Now, when it was first made, it was actually looked like gray slurry. It, it, it wasn't very nice, but as it cooled, these nodes began to form and crystallize. It's still extremely hard, even the thin stuff is. But once again, we need to check to see if it truly is what we believe it is. And there is the fluorescing. You can even see some of the spatter that came out. Now, you notice the actual powder itself it really doesn't fluoresce, like there's, uh, that's just stuff on the outside of the bottle, it's actually glowing like that. But the powder itself does not in any way glow, save for the little bits that have splattered out as finished rubies. And when we first melt it, it is liquid, turns kind of this brown gray stuff, and then as it cools, it still gets a little gray, almost white, and then all of a sudden, it turns red and pinky in color. It's kind of neat, but boy oh boy does it get hot. I am going to determine if I can make a bunch of this thin stuff and then remelt it to reliquify it and put it into a larger gem style that I might be able to actually get some good crystal formation like you see happening in this one. See if we can get some of the uh, cleavage showing on the crystals as it forms. Or maybe I will need a pressure cooker to do that, but that's a little bit beyond what I really want to do. Anyhow, I thought I'd bring that out and show you guys that you can have some fun with basic chemicals, a little bit of electricity. And make sure if you're doing any of these at home, you wear proper safety equipment. Protect your eyes, protect your hands. It's powerful UVs are made while you're making the plasma arcs. You must make sure you know what you're doing and never play with high voltage alone. Be safe, everyone, and be well.